Hey everyone. So I've been wanting to experiment with close-ups in VR for a while because most VR cameras are not capable of getting very close to the subject. So this video is about a custom VR close-up camera that I've been experimenting with. Uh, just a warning, this is a pretty long video and I didn't really do much editing. So really you should probably only watch this if you're into this kind of really nerdy stuff. So what am I doing here? Uh, I'm using a lot of like hot glue and a Dremel and I'm building this little prototype camera rig actually. Um, so this is a Mobius cam. It's for like a drone or I guess a spy cam or something like that. Um, but the cool thing about them is that you can take them apart. And like here's the lens. And uh, here's the battery. And here are some extension cables so that I can mount the lenses here. And I'm making a stereo rig that is capable of macro photography. Um, these are wide angle lenses, so not qu I don't think it's going to be quite VR 180, but we'll see how wide we can get. And um, the reason that I'm doing this is because I wanted to be able to shoot VR close-ups. So this is a little experiment. Um, normally you want to use a, like a normal IPD and you have the lenses mounted there and I wouldn't need to take anything apart for that. But when you want to shoot things close-up, then you actually need to use a formula, which is, I think, 1 over 30 or 1 over 40th of the distance to the subject um, for where your lenses are placed. So uh, close up, you want to actually get them real close together, as close together as possible, probably. And let's see, I can now get the lenses right up next to each other. And then actually, if you want to shoot landscapes, you want to still have a stereo effect. You want some far apart. You get the idea. Um, so I'm just experimenting with this, and then this button here actually runs them. Um, there's no Arduino or anything, actually. Why don't I flip this over and we can take a look. Okay, so here's the back. Um, we just got a push button down here, and then two more push tact switches. Uh, resistor, and some diodes, and that's pretty much it. No Arduino, no microprocessor or anything. Uh, the diodes are just so that I can plug USB in to the to the cam um, to the two Mobius cameras and either power them or download the contents, and then it won't power the other one also. So that uh, keeps the power going in one direction. And then the tech switches are so that I can, if I need to, um, this button will turn them on and off together, and then the tech switches will do individual ones. Now I'm going to put it together and give it a test. So now we've got the batteries and the lenses in. Let's give it a shot and start it up. Alright, so it looks like they're both turning on. You can see it's now recording. Great. Now let's try the um, individual buttons. I should turn off this one. Yep. And this one. Excellent. Now I'll get the lens extensions on, and and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm still working on this sort of custom, sort of 180 VR camera rig. Um, I ran into some issues with alignment and stuff, because it is a little janky. Um, you can see. They're not so bad right now, but they were sort of pointing in different directions, and they weren't exactly straight. You can see they're not exactly straight right now. And um, I had to put just a little pad under here to kind of prop them up a little bit so they were more level. But um, I have an issue with being able to um, preview them. So what I did was, if you take the, the SD card out, so you can see it, take the SD card out and then you plug it into USB, you can use these cameras as a webcam, in like webcam mode. Try to do it with one hand here. And so then I'll do the other one too. And then uh, I've written this Python script. Uh, I'm not going to upload this to the internet. It's pretty short, so if you want to copy it down, you can just sort of copy it. It's very simple. Um, I've got code down here that comments out um, being able to sort of rotate through cameras. Because on the MacBook and a lot of power, uh, laptops, they have... 
um, built-in cameras. So you want to avoid that one and just use the webcams. So if I run this, it gives me these uh, two windows here. And this one is a composite view. So this is a composite view that has them both overlaid over each other, so you can see if they're sort of in alignment, and you can see that they're kind of not, um, they're not, they should be horizontal. So I need to fix that. And then also I've got this view, which is the, oops. So that's both cameras, so you can make sure that the, 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 the this is the right camera, it's on the right, and the left camera's on the left. Let's go back to this composite view here and try to even these out a little bit. I should probably build a brace for this. Maybe I'll do that. Horizontally, they look sort of in alignment. It's not, you can tell, sort of, uh, on the frame of way. I've got these, uh, like, reels up on my wall, these film reels, and you can tell that, like, on this side, it's, the alignment's a little off on this side, which means that the cameras are probably not facing the same direction exactly. Um, but if we take a look at the cameras, we can see that we've got a ruler out here. The interaxial distance is about two and a half millimeters. Uh, at one over 30, you know, the magic ratio of uh, interaxial to distance to subject, that gives us a close up range of about 70 millimeters. So that's 30. It's about 60, that's about 70, 70, 75 millimeters. So we should be able to get a close up from here. And um, it shouldn't make us too cross eyed or dizzy. I think actually, just from experience of doing it, you can actually even push it to 1 over 20, which would then be 50 millimeters, which is about here. And um, so let's just do some experiments. Okay, so uh, SD cards are back in the camera. Let's go ahead and roll it. Make sure they're recording. Um, yep, recording. Good. Okay. So, this is our close up test. Uh, this is 30 millimeters. This is a 30 millimeter close up. This is about 60 millimeters. 60 millimeter close up. Make sure we're still at 60. So that's 30, 60. So this is about 75. 75 millimeter close up. That's the end of our test. Let's go ahead and turn the camera off. Okay, turn it off. So let's go ahead and download the footage. So I've got a uh, USB plugged in. And so the two. Uh, the two Mobius cameras have mounted right there, so I'll just pull down the newest video. Let this copy. Okay, so now I'm in After Effects. I've brought in the footage. Here it is, left and right seven. You can see the footage looks like this. Um, let's go through it a little bit. So it's very blue, and it's also uh, warped and everything. So basically, what I'm doing is just uh, we've got color correction on the bottom, and then uh, re-lens the fish, and then to lat long to turn it into a rectangular. And you can see, there it is. Um, so I'm just color correcting it very quickly, just a little bit. Um, and then you can see there's a lot of black space. This is in the uh, normal top bottom a rectangular 360 3D stereo format. Uh, there's a lot of black space because obviously it's not a 360 video, it's just about, I forget if it's 170 or something like that. But these are the wide angle lenses on the Mobius cam, so whatever that is. Um, the alignment is a little bit off, so I'm going to actually bring this down to the same place as the other one. And then uh, bring the opacity down so that I can align these a little bit better.
That should be pretty okay, maybe. We'll see. Um, so now I'll go ahead and pull the opacity back up and then put it back to where it was. Um, so basically what I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and save a frame. I'm going to call it frame.png and replace the ones there. And the reason I'm doing that is, um, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm running this app called map, which creates a server and that server, uh, just a local web server, um, is serving up this folder which I don't need that right now, and that has the frame in there, and there's the frame. Uh, the reason that I'm serving the frame there is because, if we cut back to the other camera, so that frame is going up on the web server, and if we look at this right here, I've got an S7 that we, uh, one of our S7s, and I'm in debug mode, so I don't actually need the headset, but I made this app a long time ago when we were working on our first project to uh, allow us to color correct quicker in the headset. Uh, it's called Broadcaster, and basically, it just looks for on the local server this frame.png and uh, textures a sphere with it. So you can update, this, you know, whenever you update that that image, uh, it sends it over to the, to the to this. So there's the image. So for example, if I went here and let's say change the color. And then did the same thing and exported a frame. Call it frame.png and uh, render that out. It should pretty soon. There it is. So that's how uh, the little broadcaster app works. So, yeah, let's go ahead and change the color back. And then um, I will export a section of the video. Call it test. Export it as H264. And uh, go ahead and render that out. And then uh, we'll take a look at it when it's done in VR. So I upload the video to the Samsung S7, and I'm in Samsung VR. And let's go ahead and play it. Um, so pause it for a second and change the screen type to what we want. Yeah, this feels a little close for sure, but not bad. I mean, the, the stereo depth is certainly there. Um, the sides are way off, so you can't really look to the side without feeling super cross-eyed, and it is still very fish-eyed and warped, so I think that needs work as well. But it's pretty okay, and I mean, it's certainly much better than is possible with you know a Google Jump or whatever that has a, a minimum distance of one meter. So this is much closer than that. Let's go ahead and play the video and see what it looks like. So yeah, it feels really close up still. That's a lot more comfortable. So that's the, uh, the 60 millimeter distance. And 75, yeah, so 75 feels pretty comfortable actually. So that would, that would work for a close up. I mean, I definitely feel close to, to me, which is weird, to the subject. Um, let me cancel that. So we can turn it on loop. Is there a loop option? There used to be a loop option. Pretty interesting. It definitely would need some work. Um, and the alignment seems to be a little bit off still. But and actually the quality is not that bad for what it is. And they're very inexpensive cameras. I feel a little cross-eyed still, especially when if you compare it to like the the mono when it switches to mono and goes to uh, the menu. And then when it goes back to stereo, it's a little, a little jarring, but not, 
not far off. All right, well, that's it for this video. If you're interested in seeing the sample video I shot, there's a link in the description below. And if you have any ideas of what I should use this camera for or ways to improve it, just leave a comment and let me know what you think. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.